Avian influenza H7N9 is a new influenza virus that represents a challenge to safeguard livelihoods. In less than a month, there have been 113 confirmed cases with 23 human deaths. We decided to organize this meeting as soon as possible. We wanted to get the best experts uh, in the world. To bring on board different expertise to the institution. Good morning, uh, great to see such an impressive group of people. The beauty is that we can actually come up with something that is holistic. The meeting was structured around three main themes. We see three areas where we have to put our minds together and deliver something. What are the mechanisms spread? It's moving closer and faster than we see. What is the risk for the poultry production within the affected areas? Would we be able to diagnose it? And what is the risk for food safety within that area? And what are the patterns of infection? From a livelihoods issue, the perception or real risk of humans causing market fluctuations will have an impact. Let's not stop bird trading in this high-risk area, let's control it better. We're not necessarily going to be expecting, through market chains, a sudden long jump, but rather many short, small, fast jumps because of the market chains yeah. that are connected and how they work. The question has come up as to what the likelihood of the virus infecting swine is, uh, given the mammalian link. We're asking, I think, the right questions. The thing is, it's high risk. We call it high risk in the infected area. Are we saying that this is also high? Yeah, so, no, I'd say moderate, because if I put it down to moderate. H7N9 does not cause visible disease in infected chickens, and thus goes undetected. We have to go in search of the virus. We need to know in which species this virus is circulating. There could be some asymptomatic uh, carriers in birds, including in wild birds. Quails, ducks, pigeons, and chickens. The system tells you where the virus is, and it gives you an idea of trends over time. Active surveillance is going to be far more important. We include a questionnaire that tells us if there is an impact of the virus in poultry in the context of drop in production. Chinese authorities have immediately initiated active surveillance. The value of transparency and information sharing cannot be underestimated and China needs to be commended. We would like to advise those countries which are in the neighborhood of China as to how they should set up their surveillance program. Do we want to have the same approach to non infected country as well? They have to demonstrate that they are uninfected, mm -hmm. especially in the high-risk uninfected countries. Mm -hmm. It becomes very hazardous to consider the absence of positive as negative. The result of this very first, very first scan is we will have a, essentially a map Positives are meaningful, negatives not necessarily. The last one is about uh, risk management along the market chain. What are the control strategies that are being recommended? Less, less. You are online. This infection will not be controllable by standard means of culling. It's just too widely spread already. Did you discuss vaccination? Yes. On vaccination, I would recommend that resources are focused on a preparation of a vaccine. Biosecurity is key, particularly true for food safety. Constantly promote the use of good hygiene practices. They put uh, plexiglass in front that people can still you know, pick their birds yeah, yeah. and see how they are slaughtered because there's a whole slaughter process behind the glasses. Any other measures that you wish to set or highlight? We identified multiple ones. The next one is movement controls. Along the transport. Cleaning of vehicles immediately. Let's choose the critical control points. It's a set of uh, 15 recommendations. It's difficult for people to digest everything and carefully cook. Treat it like dangerous. Cook and a simple list of action to avoid cross-contamination. Farmers clearly need to see the benefits of implementing these measures. So can we have a, a quick exchange between the risk assessment, the surveillance and the risk management? How we need to basically finalize yes. uh, something that we will then present. And again, keep in mind, these things need to be, they need to be realistic. So we have these documents, they will be ready uh, tonight, they will be sent out and, uh, and I think that's one of the main achievements of this meeting. I'm very pleased with, with, with this meeting here. Yeah. I, I mean, it's been very short notice. FAO is the major source of global, you know, or regional information. FAO has expertise, but also has the facility to bring people together. Obviously that blends uh, in with our One Health 
uh, mantra. And just to, to really compliment all of you for taking this on at such a serious level, we really could use the guidance and appreciate the coordination at your end. I cannot but congratulate you for, for organizing this in such a short time. This is where FAO can make a difference. FAO, along with its partners, are ready to combat any kind of threat to come.